Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. Uh, we got summer camps going on all uh, for the next three weeks. So these shows are going to be potentially shorter, just kind of a mix and match. Um, you know, so I might just uh, end the show abruptly. So just kind of bear with me as we jump right into our news. So let's talk about some top stories from the past week. You know, of course, you've probably been hearing about January 6th because that's literally what everyone's talking about in terms of the mainstream media. And so far, the just some of the cliff notes is that, uh, you know, you probably heard that more recent thing on NPR was like, oh, 187 minutes of uh, former President Donald Trump doing nothing while uh, attackers attacked the Capitol building, uh, missing texts from uh, Trump's Secret Service, well, corroborating testimony from when seen Trump wanting to join the people who stormed the Capitol. Uh, of course, enjoy these uh, consistent committee hearings that will continue to go on. Stephen Bannon was also on there as well. And, um, you know, it's just a lot of stuff going on here and there. Another story that also caught my eye was a water bill, a story that compiled into a massive $1.7 million debt of unpaid utility. Uh, tenants of the 1,400 rental uh, units out of sprawled out across Indianapolis are on the brink of a water shutoff due to the non-payment by their property management. Tenants had such a hard time getting the landlord, nonprofit, JPC, Affordable Housing Foundation to pay those fees. And unless something happens, September is their shutoff date. And bringing this back to kind of Missoula, Missoula also had an ordinance drafted and figuring out, updating some of the wording in terms of what they're going to do if, uh, let's say, the house doesn't pay for their water bill. So in some cases, the landlord or property management uh, just outright pays the water bill and you're just, you know, the renters are none the wiser, like the people in Indianapolis. And so part of what the uh, city of Missoula is doing in conjunction with the acquisition of our own water company now is that they're working towards an ordinance that would go after the landlord, the people who own the property, if uh, the utility of the water is unpaid. But there's always some kind of weird contracts that go on between landlords and their tenants as well. So water rights are very universal in the United States and without these, those uh, the people in the Indianapolis would have to be evicted based on the health department uh, uh, health concerns, a shutoff would cause a massive homelessness problem in our community. The city of Indianapolis wrote on a court document filed last month, the mayor Joe Hogsett said that they are doing everything to help families. As Missoula is creating affordable housing throughout our community, Greg Green Forte, Montana governor, is asking for Missoula's help in a task force. This uh, task force is geared towards, you guessed it, housing and figuring out ways to help Montana's affordable housing. Several Missoula state legislatures and one University of Montana um, economist were named members of a new housing task force created by uh, just this past week by Gre Governor J Greg Jean Forte and charged with providing recommendations to make housing more affordable and attainable. Uh, this report came out of the Missoula Current stating that the Missoula Montana's population increased by 10 percent in the last 10 years while housing uh, six is uh, housing vacancies at 6.6 percent, and people are getting uh, and people are moving, keep moving here as well. So, uh, so far, the task force will be looking for options and strategies to offset the increase in people and lack of housing in many areas, including Missoula, which have a vacancy rate around or below 1% at any given time. So far, the main goal is to draft a new building code for the state of Montana to help streamline affordability slash density. Most of these folks are from Missoula, and we've had pl uh, been pretty hit hard here as well, but in many other communities across Montana, they have not uh, addressed a lot of the main major issues in terms of the higher uh, cost of housing as the bubble keeps getting bigger and bigger. But at the same time, a lot of bubbles are potentially bursting. You can notice that as well, like gas prices are starting to go down. You know, it's still above three dollar. Uh, it's still above the four dollar mark for sure. Like it peaked at four ninety nine. I just drove by a couple places there. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see different um, gas stations to uh, determine. It's like, OK, one says like four seventy nine and another one's like four fifty nine. And then there's one like four forty nine. Um, I, I can't tell you where they are, but uh, there's a lot of other places around town as well. For Like in terms of another example, in terms of towns and housing, um, you know, I'm not going to I hate to throw Butte under the bus, but they're one of the few towns in Montana that are more about uh, preserving historic buildings than uh, building new buildings. And like in the cost of, you know, uh, rebuilding or redeveloping a lot of these old uh, buildings 
a lot of times cost way more than it would be to build a whole new building. But at the same time, you got to understand that there's material costs are going up. Developers are building like crazy. Um, and a lot of Missoulians have had to go to a lot of other smaller towns or other uh, places across Montana. Um, uh, just anecdotally, we've had some people from Missoula um, move to Great Falls just because the rents are a little bit cheaper there and just uh, for overall lack of availability in Missoula. Hey, people want to move to Missoula. That's just uh, that's just the way it is now. We have a reputation growing. Um, speaking of leaving Missoula, some pe some projects that are happening in Missoula are pushing some people out of their dwelling units to make room for the Qantas Park easement. And of course, I'll get into this a little bit more during my city council report. The easement would allow for a 21 unit for working class families. Uh, Daniel Carlino from City of Missoula is worried about the current residents living out by the, uh, basically across the street from the, uh, uh, from Front Street, uh, across from the Missoula Public Library. And it's uh, the, a big part of this is in conjunction with Parks and Recreation that want to uh, give some part of the uh, Kiwanis Park to kind of help uh, bridge the gap to uh, basically make it more open so they're uh, to help uh, reduce crime in Kiwanis Park. So that was what there's a couple things that Missoula is interested in doing in terms of teaming up with the developer as they move forward. But of course, this has been a plan to uh, redevelop the old building since 2018. Um, Daniel Carlino, it, and it all comes back to private property owners can do whatever they want on their property and the local slash state government can regulate the zoning and building code, but just not what actually goes on their sites. So that's one of the kind of like the end result of what happened. And I just wanted to give you a quick spoiler as I will dive deeper into this as well. So uh, speaking of, uh, you know, Diving a little bit deeper, uh, we got our summer camps going strong. Uh, we got uh, another camp next week. It is our final week of our stop animation camp. There is still room available for our afternoon camps that run from 2 to 6 p.m. in the afternoon. So if you have a kid uh, anywhere between the ages of 8 and 14 interested in doing some stop animation, some basically getting them started and interested in editing and filming movies, um, here's a couple of examples of some of the films that the kids have made. And then when I come back, we're going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. In the time before time, there existed a man. A man whose righteous fury knew no bounds. His sworn purpose was to protect nature from those who would harm it. This nature guy was a hero to all. This is not his story. I swear I was gonna pick it. Wait, you're not nature guy. No, you're right. I'm environment dude. That just sounds like a ripoff of nature guy. No, it's not. We're actually really good friends. You're just a fanboy. No. And don't forget to recycle. What's up, everyone? <laughs> like, subscribe, hit the bell, and comment how much me and Nature Guy are friends for the next video. See you later. He just stole a book. Hey, stop. Hey, are you the book police? I know exactly where the book thief is. I'm on it. Yeah, 
I saw him. I was reading that book. And then all of a sudden, you know, he just stole the book. Oh, wait, there he is. Get him. This is this book I was going to check out. Don't worry. Be sure about that. You look a little sus. Hey, watch your language. Sus means suspect, you know? But he's the book thief. I just grabbed this book off the shelf. It's not like I've stolen it yet. You turn that book off. Someone's going to get hurt. Hey, listen. I don't want any trouble. Well, it looks like you already found it. Right here, it tells you it shows that... There was a book stolen today. You see, Tio is always set for the news, and that should be right. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, you lost me, dude. You turn that book or you get arrested. Wait, does he even have the authority? I don't know. Another problem solved by the book police. Ashley, can I check this out? Fine. What was the point of all this? Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. We're kicking things off with Nope, which is a movie by Jordan Peele, and it's about aliens or something uh, that follows the mysterious death of their father. Two siblings trying to save their ranch. One of them probably wants to uh, pump and dump and sell it off to somebody else. Gets a chance to capture an alien spacecraft on film. Let me guess, they're going to hire a bunch of people to get cameras, everything like that. Things are going to go wrong. Things aren't going to go the way you think they're going to go. Uh, then they maybe get something and they're just like, okay, we, we did everything we were going to do. It's like, wait, there's more. And then kind of crazy stuff happens and something to do with uh, this and that. But they, they try not to get abducted throughout the whole entire th uh, movie while also trying to capture the, uh, uh, the money shot on camera. So that's what you can kind of expect from this movie, my dudes. Up next, we have a movie called How to Please a Woman. Watch as many men appear in this film to sway the star of this film as she's about to give up on love and take a chance on with the safe chill guy. But as upon reading the synopsis, she's basically surrounded by a bunch of hunky guys and is just like, I'm kind of bored of this. I think I'm going to try women. And that's basically the movie. So she um, is like kind of reboots her life and she comes out in this comedy drama that has no one uh, you know because at least a Hallmark movie has some uh, B-list actors that fail. Anyways, my old school. Every, every, ever wanted to uh, Billy Madison your way back into school? Enjoy a non-traditional student. Go back to school after some time leaving in the 90s at the age of 16 or whatever. Maybe he's like a super smart kid and they're just like, he peaked. And he's like, I'm the smartest thing ever. But this stars the movie, star, uh, um, Stars the guy from the GoldenEye movie who goes, I'm invincible in this dime a dozen old school movie about going back to school. At first, he stands out like a mascot, but slowly comes into his own. A reboot on life, just like the previous film I just spoke on. Alone together, hey, 
You like those scenarios in which your ex and you are stuck together on a cruise, apartment, elevator, you name it. This is that kind of movie. This movie is about a couple on the rocks forced to live together in an Airbnb because, hey, they put a deposit down. Um, we have a series of uh, films that ask the questions, wouldn't most people just leave if they are stuck with their ex in a place? You know, like, it's an Airbnb. You can basically just be like, hey, can you just buy me out of this Airbnb and we can just move on and do other things? I don't know. But, you know, it would take away from the drama. And that's what movies are all about, is uh, bringing up drama, whether you need it or not. And that concludes a pre-critic for you guys. And up next, we got a uh, movie called I Love Trouble from 1948, where I redubbed it. Here's dubbing stuff. I hope you managed to get the Anaheim peppers. Oh, yeah. I drove all the way to Anaheim. And I see you've managed to clean up your apartment before I came over. Mmm. Oh, excuse me. Let me go grab those peppers now. At least you should have a photo of me somewhere. All right, which one was it again? Mm. Oh, yeah. That's better. All right, we are T-minus three minutes away from Anaheim Peppers. Hmm, but first, let me check your closet. Hmm, I don't see any skeletons. Well, that's my kitchen closet. It's where I keep the kitchen. Hmm, I'm not seeing the Anaheim Peppers. Are you sure? It's like the only peppers that are in the fridge. Honey, those are jalapeno peppers. Yes, they're Anaheim. Jalapenos. Anaheim is a type of pepper, honey. Who cares? Hmm. Uh, mm hmm Yeah? Hmm. Come on. Hmm. What is it? I guess I make jalapeno poppers after all. Just make sure you use the fresher kind of cheese. My sensitive old man stomach can't handle it. Oh, and um, I do have some cheese in there, but they're like craft singles, so, you know, if you can make it work, great, but if you can't, maybe I should just Oh, go no, to the don't store. go to the store. Craft is fine. Just make sure you don't microwave the plastic on the uh, What do you think cheese. I am? Okay, okay, whatever. Is she making jalapeno poppers? Yeah, just as planned. I can't keep doing this. I think she's suspecting Oh, something. that's just your stupid imagination. The jalapeno popper grip is solid. This can't last forever, you know. Don't interrupt me interrupting you. Oh, uh, okay. We're going to have so many jalapeno poppers <laughs> that nobody's going to stand against okay, us again. But... Why were you on the phone for so long in there? Oh, sorry about that. I was just talking to my friend Michelle. She's going to have a bachelorette party. Hmm. I think I should make an appearance at a bachelorette party. Did she invite you? Well, no. She only wanted a... a guy's bachelorette party, whatever that means. Well, she never really grew past her tomboy phase. Oh, don't tell me you're going to be the only guy going to that bachelorette party. No, I'm not. She's also bringing her fiancé. Oh, weak sauce! Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council stuff. Kicking things off at city council, the city of Missoula moved to update the city regulations on subdivisions. Of course, I spoke this about this before. This is kind of like finalizing some of the wording in terms of this. The state of Montana changed the rules in terms of how to subdivide, zone, and, sub and some, some of the building codes here and there, and then Missoula is trying to update that. Another big item is the easement request I spoke about in my news report, and also last week on Friday about the Front Street property rebuilding to, into Kiwanis Park. The, uh, Missoula current article kind of uh, threw uh, Daniel Carlino, city council member, under the bus, um, telling him is like he's very misinformed, uh, saying that he doesn't know what the, the initial plan for the site is. Um, but at the, at the same time, you got to understand that one of the big things that he brought up during the meeting was just like, hey, you're uh, having people having to move out of their place while you wait for more uh, building opportunities to come into, to come into fruition. But at the same time, you're displacing people temporarily but in the long term, it could affect them because there's been a lot of uh, short-term rentals and a lot of different issues going on with that. And I'll get into also short-term rentals later on in my uh, committee reports for the housing um, committee meeting. So David Selvage talked about this project. So if you don't, if you're not familiar with this project, he kind of gives you a rundown and kind of talks a little bit more about this uh, project. And he was talking about it last week. We're talking about six additional units to a project. That six additional units translates into what probably makes a much better project, a more affordable project for redevelopment of what is downtown property, which is what our comprehensive land use plans call for in density. Um, and that this is where density is desired. So this is a tool available. 
um, there may not be any additional reviews available. This is an allowed use in the zone if it meets all the requirements for design excellence and meets all the conditions and is permitted to occur within the next three years. This project may go forward. Uh, what nobody knows is what are the developers' plans. Yep, and that's you know basically kind of up to the developer when it comes down to it. They had uh, initial plans to create like a three, two, three story, 20, uh, 21 unit complex. Um, and part of this is the city and the easement basically kind of rezoning it. And the park easement is also using this as a leverage to kind of uh, create a, a better corridor to Kiwanis Park. And that's w the uh, city's involvement in this particular phase. Um, so far, the city seems to have some sway on how they will approach this development through the easement. But overall, the developer will have the final say in what the building will uh, initially look like. So Hannah Consul, resident of Ward 3, talks about some of the uh, renting challenges here in Missoula as we're trying to grow, but at the same time, these are some of the people who are suffering. This is the first year I was able to resign a lease, um, allowing me to enjoy the leisure of a Missoula summer so far without smoke <laughs> um, and without personal housing instability. I'm delighted that this fall I'll be able to harvest the squash that I planted this spring um, and that just in the past few weeks got their first blooms. However, last year at this time, it was in a much different situation. Seven other residents amongst three units and just one home in Missoula had to find rentals in a town with a less than 1% vacancy rate. Those are the data we had at that time. Um, my former roommate has since had to move twice in just this past year um, and went from our big beautiful brick home with a fenced yard to a month to month lease and a trailer with no doors on the bedroom or bathroom. With this proposed development, 12 renters will face this, dis this displacement in a community where the housing crisis has become even worse than a year ago when I was last moving or two years ago when the developer was planning on redeveloping this property. And I want to make it clear that I'm fully aware that City Council cannot directly prevent this displacement due to the severe disparity that in power that tenants and landlords experience in this state. However, the City Council has a responsibility to preserve and uphold their mission to preserve affordable housing and the creative means that they can. Some of you have placed concern that these properties would not qualify as safe and affordable housing. So then I ask, what actions will you take to hold the property owners accountable for the living conditions that they have or have failed to provide? Okay, and she does go on to talk a little bit more about um, um, Missoula's renters are struggling and want the city to do better and use what little power they have to stand with renters in Missoula in these tough times. Uh, throughout the series of comments, many renters called in, showed up, and spoke about moving more than two times within the year and at current renting rates and availability, it ain't easy. Um, Dan and Carlino, City Council, talks about how the city could influence developers, and this is what he had to say. So right now, their financial incentive is to leave it the renters in their homes, although they could develop it to 12 instead of five units. With the easement granted, then they could develop it to 18 units, which would give them a big financial incentive granted by the city council. That's our power. We have power over their financial incentive. It's a really hard time to find a place to live in Missoula, especially for the 52% of renters in town. And I'm surprised that the vacancy rate's up at 2.9% now, um, but it's been around 1% and even down to 0.3% in the past couple of years. And it's still a really hard time to find a place to live, especially an affordable place like where these people are living right now. And if there's anything that we can do to help slow down this process, I think it's, it would be the most helpful thing to do as a council to do something within our, the power that we do have to send it back to committee and take more time on this item. Okay, so to uh, Daniel Carlino's benefit as well as that I spoke to somebody who just recently moved to Missoula and it took him about a month to uh, find a place uh, to uh, have a permanent, uh, oh well, a rental unit essentially. So, uh, you know, Daniel wanted to put this back to committee to have this uh, talked more and more about and try to figure out solutions to help residents. He did bring up the fact that, uh, uh, talked a little bit more about um, um, Grant Creek and how they uh, they denied zoning and delayed some of the construction that happened there and then the city of Missoula and a lot of the uh, city council members on council just like, hey, Daniel, it's like, Grant Creek is completely separate from this particular project that's going on right here and has nothing, has no merit to this current project. And that was one of the things that they had to uh, talk to him a little bit more about that. And uh, Daniel, Carlin, uh, Daniel Carlino's claims were re, uh, rebuked by uh, Heidi West from City Council uh, from um, Ward 1. I disagree with your argument of financial um, incentive. I think um, 
the result would be that we see 12 units. And in order to uh, make that whatever the financial package um, is pencil, those 12 units are going to be more unaffordable. Um, I don't know that we can, I don't think we can guarantee the outcome that you would like um, by sending it back to committee. And um, it, there, there's just no way to do that. Okay, so you know it's the it's you know progress moves forward ever so much, and then Mike Nugent from City Council also takes a little bit more time about city's influence on private development. I, I really think that we need to be careful implying that we have the ability to do things we don't, because even if we delay this, even if we send it back to committee, even if we vote it down, the owners still have the ability to, under the terms of their lease, give notice as to whatever is going to happen, and basically evict people from from those units. And then they could decide to do a completely different project if they wanted to. And I know we're focusing on one part of the, the, the goals of the housing report, but there are, there are more goals. And one of them is more dense living downtown. And you know, we, we talk about development and we either have the opportunity to go out and build on fields, or we have the ability to build more densely in the community. And whatever we do, we're wrong. And whatever we do, the developer's a bad guy. But the reality is that our growth plan calls for, for dense development downtown. So there are gonna be times where an older building is torn down to build a, a more dense housing development, which generally would line up with the goals. Um, so I think that, that su suggesting, suggesting that we have these broader opportunities in the, on this vote, I just don't agree with it. Um, and I don't know how it works um, as far as this conversation goes, but I, I feel like we've got a motion on the floor and we've kind of talked it out. Yeah. So part of this is that, um, uh, you know, like there's a lot of underlying issues that are happening within the city of Missoula. And this is, uh, and basically the city council were uh, talking and back and forth during this meeting, basically saying is that this is a bigger issue in which this particular issue is being uh, snowballed into a bigger issue uh, because they think that the front street although it is compiling with all these other projects that are going on in and around the city of Missoula with higher density and uh, rezoning to allow for higher density. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting just to kind of see, like from the development standpoint, progress, property, um, renters' rights, all in, all in all, many of the people on council disagreed with Daniel Carlino's approach, but to the core of it, um, caring about a lot of the renters and making sure that they're taken care of with a, uh, and also one of the big things that were also brought to this during this meeting is that uh, a overwhelming majority of, of, uh, of people in Missoula that actually live in Missoula are renters. 52% of Missoulians uh, are renters. So that's one of the statistics they brought up during this meeting as well. And even um, some of this uh, public comments were just like, you're like, hey, we're watching, you know, like, you know, regardless of whether or not you can do something uh, now, maybe somebody else could do something later on. And so that, there, there was a lot of that going on during uh, the, these meetings as well. So moving on to uh, committee meetings, they, uh, this is also more about housing. So how does the redevelopment and community program talking about the sleepy and property? And so this is a kind of a, a big thing in terms of how the city wants to approach um, the Sleepy Inn Motel, because they bought it back in the COVID times, use it for a, a sense of uh, COVID-19 uh, quarantine in. Um, the presentation was, it was informal, and they were talking a little bit more about the project that they have. So uh, um, Annette Marchin Salt, um, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but talks about the West Broadway master plan for this particular corridor for their uh, Sleepy Inn site. The goals were to create some sort of a gateway experience at the corner of uh, West Broadway and Russell, have uh, some signature architecture, uh, really focus on pedestrian friendly experience on West Broadway, um, distinct identity with regard to the neighborhood, and use this as a template that would catalyze development in the, um, in the, the greater master plan area. All right, in uh, layman's terms, basically they're gonna be creating a series of commercial uh, units, uh, potential uh, uh, places for people to live, and but also uh, have a mixed use for uh, businesses and more. Hey, it's it's next to a busy uh, intersection. Uh, Dover Cole will be the developers working on this city in planning for the site, mixed use business and dwelling units with an emphasis on the commercial development. Right now, we're at a 
realtor phase in which the city is taking offers on these sites for the pur uh, purpose of mediating use and also being able to sell the property for uh, getting money that would go into the community trust, uh, the community uh, housing trust. So I'll talk a little bit more about that after Dale Bickle talks about the limitations on having this as permanent affordable housing, which was uh, floated during the uh, committee meeting. The question is whether the economics work to create a, like a, an income restricted site or not. Um, and that's where MRA could come in, where that if, um, if a developer comes in with a proposal, so what we're trying to do here is that we're not gonna maximize the amount of sale proceeds here. We want, we want to maximize the amount of, uh, maximize the implementation of the West Broadway master plan. And so, but a combination of things that we could help try to, to, to try to attract a developer that would do uh, a permanent affordable component are things like MRA and you know, additional MRA investment or a reduction in the sales value of, of the site itself. And so those are the things that we will have to work with. But if we don't get a developer who is interested in those things, you know, the city really isn't in the business of building housing. It's the, it's the private sector's role. And if we can support that, we can. But if somebody comes in and doesn't have a component like that, that's where we'll be best for difficult. And at the same time, the city of Missoula, uh, during this meeting, as well as that a lot of uh, council members saying, is like, there's a lot of other projects on the docket right now. And uh, Jordan Hess from the city talks a little bit more about this site. Um, if, if we're able to sell this property um, for a different use, and then um, as a function of that, develop um, more aff permanently affordable housing on a, on a, on a nearby site um, that, is, um, that is at a lower cost per unit to develop because it doesn't exhibit those site constraints, I feel like that's, that's still, um, a win in, in my book. So I, 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 I hope that we will continue to be apprised of that. Um, and um, I, I, um, I think it's one of the real highlights of that affordable housing trust fund that we that we created the ordinance that when city property is sold, the proceeds have to go into that fund. You know, that's a very interesting take for sure. I didn't even know that the city of Missoula had uh, that as a plan. So if they have any assets or property that they sell is that the ha affordable housing trust um, gets money for more of their activity. And, you know, it's a, an initial phase too. Like they they basically just started the affordable housing trust just recently. And um, there's a lot of uh, something new uh, for me. And, you know, it's you know, it's optimism for the long term, but in the short term, consequences are showing more and more people struggling to find permanent housing in the short term, um, let alone even temporary housing with rentals. Uh, however, the uh, city already has many affordable housing projects from in the pipeline from the Trinity Navigation Center to the Scott, Scott Street Land Trust, which is going to be part of the uh, 60 per, uh, 120% of the uh, average um, median income and so that's going to be part of the development with that so the Scott Street Land Trust I talked a little more and more, more about this but the big thing about that was is that the city with the land trust owns the land on the uh, house that you're buying and then once the house is fully purchased the land will be eased into it. it's kind of like you know you rent to own a car but they're doing that with housing and then the city of Missoula is the one that is regulating the land trust so yeah there's a, a lot of interesting things happening in the pipeline uh, regardless and you know the initial plan the first initial plan that the city of Missoula wanted to do was create this kind of corridor and they were kind of floating the idea uh, for the immediate help for the uh, housing but even if they decided to do more affordable housing just permanently in that particular site one of the bigger drawbacks is that it's gonna it's time it's all about time. It's like, you know, you have people in the short term who are looking for housing, um, um, the uh, renting rates, the uh, housing, I think, you know, like, it, like I said, it was like the floating around 1% uh, vacancies, um, you know, it might be up to like 2.6, you know, even in Montana, the vacancy rate in the state of Montana, I believe it was like 6.6% according to that Gene Forte article about housing in Montana with the task force. So um, Ricky uh, Hen Henderson, Missoula Housing and Community Development, talks about the short-term rental trends um, in terms of, actually, this is we're actually moving on to a whole another subject, which also brings me back to a little bit more about, you know, what we're talking about in terms of like summer, um, vacation, home living, you know, people who are college students here for the summer or people who are going out of town and then renting their place as an Airbnb. The city of Missoula wants to basically find the number and quantify that. There have been a lot of interest in terms of that to determine whether or not it's like, okay, so this is not, this is temporary, really short-term Airbnb rentals in conjunction with how much it would be available for more like long-term rentals as well. So it's interesting to kind of see some of these numbers. It's not a lot, but it is a good amount of numbers that could ev uh, eventually, maybe even potentially be used for more permanent housing. So Ricky uh, Henderson talks a little bit more about this. 
um, we've seen a lot of different numbers thrown around in the community, both in news reporting and uh, if you go to Air D and D, one of the sites where folks can check or Air DNA, one of the sites where folks can check these numbers publicly, they aren't doing that deduplication. So this is really, as far as we know and as far as we can tell from the data, the most accurate number of how many of these short-term rentals are on the market and, and listed on these sites. Okay, so if you actually do take a look, you know, up here, the number in Missoula, the total listings uh, for every part of these communities, you know, Captain John Mullen, all the way to the west side uh, area, 616 total listings of temporary units. You have uh, basic listings, the STR, which is uh, essentially the ones that are um, more uh, advertised. And then, of course, the unique units, which um, is more uh, associated with, uh, you know, like Airbnbs. So, so 445 Airbnb type of living, uh, different, different levels, but overall it's over 600 uh, units uh, that are short-term rentals, whether it's like you have a teacher who has the summer off and is on sabbatical or something like that, you know, and they just want to sublet their house as well. So it's very interesting about how like different levels. And then of course you have those kind of uh, landlords who, uh, like myself, who live with their tenants, which is kind of like, doesn't necessarily need to be, is not part of this whole short-term rental deal, deal as well. So it's interesting to see this, but according to the numbers, 95% of these short-term units are related to units by themselves, and only about 5% of these were related to like a room in a place. So, however, some of the data related to summer homes and full rentals for the summer are not counted. There are many things like my place that kind of fall through the cracks. Um, Ricky Henderson talks more about uh, types of renters staying during the seasons. Um, and we know that a lot of folks tend to sublet um, their renter rentals when they are not living in them. You know, we have, like I mentioned, students, teachers, wildland firefighters, nurses, uh, community organizers, folks who, for whatever reason, uh, regularly travel outside of Missoula and may live out of town for weeks or months at a time. Um, if we push compliance, we are potentially outing those situations to landlords uh, and notifying them that their tenants are in violation of their lease. And that is a place that I would encourage you all to have a conversation about um, whether that is the city's role or not in, in enforcement of these units. So. Okay, so a lot of things that are happening within the city, um, even in terms of just like what they can do is they can't necessarily uh, do too much uh, legal actions. It's interesting in terms of city oversight, but to rest assured, ordinances are financial burdens at most in terms of punishments. And for the most part, what a landlord does with their property is their own business. However, one of the biggest takeaways from this meeting that I definitely got away was like when you turn your home into a commercial rental, uh, short term or otherwise is putting yourself out there on the market for this very reason. So the concept of the IRS could potentially go after you for undeclared income. So think about it like that. So whether you are Airbnb or sublet, be aware that there's some scrutiny when it comes to turning your home into a commercial property or commercial money maker. And if you are making money, you have to declare it to the IRS or risk an audit oh, and audits are expensive. So that's just a, that's, that's like even like, it can be very deep and just a lot of different things here and there. And it's like, and a lot of this ordinance is complaint driven. And so the city of Missoula is looking to figure out a best way to help the um, neighbors butting heads with short term renters during these times. And of course, I'll spare you more of the details and feel free to check out these and more by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, it is a wonderful website for those interested in learning more about the City of Missoula, uh, upcoming agenda items, uh, past meetings with videos, and you can see uh, different topics and all sorts of fun things as well as going on to an Engage Missoula. So you go to engagemissoula.com, and that's where you can actually see uh, current and upcoming projects in Missoula, and you can actually join the conversation and ask questions and just uh, get actually responses. Um, I. Uh, Float an idea of asking some questions about, uh, you know, like when they're building bigger parks and stuff like that. It's just like, you know, you're building more spaces, but, you know, one of the things is like, are you also including the idea of potentially having to have more staff there? And they address me within the within half an hour. So it's very good to have a lot of that uh, connectivity, but a lot of the city council and a lot of people in Missoula are pushing for EngageMissoula.com to be uh, your source of getting in contact directly and looking at some of the projects that are happening currently and in the future. So up next, we have some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. But before I get to those, I do want to show you an art clip. And it is from World is Round from uh, Todd Forsgren and is going to be featured at the Missoula Art Museum. Um, and then when I come back, we're going to be talking about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula this weekend.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. It is time for Missoula events. Um, you can find out more information. I get a lot of this from MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net. All right, Wildflowers of Mount Jumbo starting this morning until about 11. Uh, meet at the Upper Lincoln Hills Trailhead in, near Mount Jumbo, near Mount Jumbo, near Saddle Trail and North Loop Trail on the map. The directions, get the high ground for a wildflower walk on Mount Jumbo. Elena will describe cultural uses for plants, ecological information, and botanical features. You will see a variety of beautiful flowers representing different flower families. Notice the different difference in elevation and aspects can make on plant assemblances as you wander with Elena. Moderate hiking and there's um, sell some elevation gain as well. So that's what's happening um, in, in the city of Missoula. If you wanna jump right on that, I'm sure they're gonna have more of these uh, activities happening as well. If you are a mother, a new mother, who have a stroller and a baby and you're looking to get some uh, physical activity, they do this regularly um, most days a week at Tool Park starting at 9.30 a.m. called Stroller Strides. It's a great way to stay active and have your kids kind of uh, mingle and uh, chill out and be watched. Um, also, Missoula Food Bank meal distribution starting at 10 a.m. It goes until about 1 p.m. and some days it goes until about 7 p.m. You want, you want to check those hours by going to the Missoula Food Bank's website. Um, it is a, a, a great opportunity for people of all economic standings to get some uh, reliable fresh food and fruit, vegetables, and food from the uh, Missoula community. Wreaths Across America Mobile Education Exhibit, Rocky Mountain Museum of Military History, is welcoming folks. Um, and they're going to be welcoming um, Vietnam Veterans Ceremony is going to be at 11 a.m. And this is the uh, Rocky uh, Mountain Museum of Military History. And I, and I believe this is near Fort Missoula. Um, you can't miss it. There's a giant uh, artillery tank just outside the building. TT. Tiny Tales and Storytime here at the Public Library at 10.30 a.m. on Friday and Saturday this weekend. Get your kids involved with reading. It's a great entry point. They do some plays, songs, and some fun times with kids to engage with learning. Uh, UM River Shuttle Service. This is a big deal because you're looking to float, and a lot of times you need two cars to float, but this takes the cars out of this whole situation. You can go uh, to the u Dash. You go to the University of Montana in any of the stops. Uh, I suggest you go to the UC Center, otherwise known as University Center Center. You guys can go jump on that. You jump on the U-Dash. Go up the river quite a bit uh, and then just float on down. And then you're able to just uh, pop on off right next to the University of Montana and get back in your car. So it's a great opportunity. They do this Thursday through Sunday starting at noon. And the last shuttle leaves at 6. Lolo Farmer's Market. You go to Lolo, have their Farmer's Market, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, Lego Club, 2 p.m. at the Public Library here um, on the second floor. Uh, and another big thing that's happening is the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, uh, part of the Missoula Children's Theater summer camps this summer. Uh, they have a 4 p.m. show and a 6 p.m. show. Make sure you have the right kids with the right show. Uh, the Missoula Children's Theater presents Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, an original adaptation of the classic fairy tale. A young princess named Snow White finds herself in peril when her stepmother, the Queen, is told by the magic mirror that the princess is fairer than she is. Aided by her two henchmen and a band of evil bats, the queen plots to get rid of Snow White. Find out tonight at MCT. For history buffs, Missoula Public Library is open late um, for people interested in history and nothing more. Starting at 7 p.m. Uh, in the Cooper Room, calling all history enthusiasts. For history buff is a public, Missoula Public Library is held at the last Friday of each month from 7 to 8, 7 to 9 p.m. Join guest speakers for a lively and entertaining presentation of historic interest. For specific topics, you can go to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. Saturday, you got markets and such happening from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You get your river market uh, by uh, the Carousel for Missoula. You also got uh, the OG market by the Red X's, and then you got the People's Market by the Thomas Marr, uh, uh, Oxford, and more in the downtown Pine Street near the courthouse. Uh, Climate Ready is doing a Nine Mile Community Center deal. Uh, it's a free public program in partnership with the Missoula Rural Electric Co-op presentation on voluntary properties such as solar energy, building installation, consumer choices, and electric vehicle accommodation. Information will be available on cost grants and possible tax breaks. And I also uh, looked into uh, getting solar panels on my roof, but the HOAs are the devil. Anyways, moving on. Make up, make the cut or dig it up. Canoe Trail, a uh, fragrant water lily is an invasive plant which impacts native species. Help CRC stop the spread. Teams that dig the most lilies will win fun prizes. Snacks and beverage will be provided. Grab friendly 
uh, family, uh, friends and family to join in this making an impact. So this is a be a part of the canoe trail, make the cut or dig it up, starting at noon tomorrow. Also, starting um, uh, around noonish is that MCAT will be doing VR and also be also doing some dance party here in our in our studio for kids uh, wanting to blow up some steam after Tiny Tales and Storm Time in the public library. It's fun for nice little kids to get moving. Uh, Saturday Kids Activity Sink or Float is going to be part of the Montana Natural History Center. It's by McCormick Park. Uh, you can't miss it. It starts at 1 o'clock on Saturday. And then we're jumping way ahead to Saturday night with the Missoula Paddleheads game. Float to the ballpark in conjunction with, you know, it's hot outside. You want to float. You can float down the river, hop on, on, on up, and enjoy a baseball game at the Oregon Park featuring the Missoula Paddleheads. And then also happening Saturday night is the North Side uh, Communities um, Movie Night. So uh, they have outdoor uh, uh, movies featuring the movie Fantastic Mr. Fox t uh, Saturday night. Um, you know, 8.30 is when they're going to start opening up and they're start showing the movie around 9.30 just as sundown's happening so you can see the screen as being projected out store. So a nice outdoor movie. Uh, donations are greatly accepted so you can continue having these outdoor movies for years to come. And they've been doing this for years to come. Uh, Fairy Tale and Superhero Festival uh, at Carousel for Missoula on Sunday. And so if you're having a kid who wants to dress up as a superhero or as a princess or prince, you can uh, join that. Come interact with local superheroes and fairy tale characters. Enjoy fun free activities and crafts at West Karis Park Lawn from 10 to 12 p.m. Oh, 12, uh, so yeah. So it's uh, for two hour blocks starting at 10 a.m. There will be costume contests for all. Costumes are not required also. So you don't have to dress up, but it is a good opportunity to dress up before Halloween. Uh, cultural identity in the arts speaking series, Cultural Stereotypes. This is gonna be happening in part of their summer talking series, and it's gonna be talking at the, I believe it's Imagination Brewing Company, uh, the, the BIPOC Arts Advisory Council is excited to announce the summer speaking series on the topic cultural identity in their hearts. And so they're going to talk about femininity. Uh, they talked about femi femininity on Jul uh, June 26th. Um, they're doing cultural stereotypes uh, this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. And then they're going to do intersectionality on August 21st at 12.30 p.m. I will have to look that up online because I don't know what that word actually means. So formed in 2022, the BIPOC Advisory Council is a subcommittee of the Arts Missoula Global. They are an all volunteer group formed to provide programming and support for BIPOC artists in the Missoula area. And then the CRC annual picnic is going to be at a homestead cabin near Sealy Lake. If you're interested in going out and about, Clearwater Resource Council would like to invite you to the annual picnic. Food and beverages will be provided. Join as they recap on the pollinator garden, upcoming lily event, water quality monitor related to blue green algae blooms, and more. RSVP Lind Lindy through the uh, a website at missoulaevents.net. So you can find out all these events and more by going on to missoulaevents.net. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? Missoulaevents.net, all that and more. So I'm going to thank you guys for joining me this morning. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It is going to be hot for sure. And hopefully things will start cooling off. I think things will definitely start cooling off. I believe that there's going to, it's going to be a dip in August. And then there's at least one more uh, heat wave that kind of rolls around mid early August. And then we're pretty much done with the, with that kind of stuff. But if we're too distracted from the fires and the smokes that are going on here in town as well, um, Blue Mountain, uh, caught on fire just recently. And um, yeah, I don't want to get into that too much. Uh, you can look that up yourself. But uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.